Hi guys and welcome to my channel. I'm Nicole Kaufman and for today's video I'm going to be talking to you about 10 things that you need to know for a natural labor. So the first thing that I think is kind of like the foundational thing for going into a natural labor is that an epidural cannot be an option until it has to be. And so really understanding why you want to have a natural labor, really understanding the science behind it and just your personal reasons I think is so important like you have to have your why you want a natural labor and just going into it without the option of an epidural otherwise it's going to be a lot easier to give in and I know I because of some of the health conditions that I have which I'll link a video here where I talk a little bit about that I really did not want to do an epidural because there were a lot more risks associated with it so I went in with the mindset that I at all all costs was not going to have an epidural but i know that like there are a lot of situations where you end up needing one and that's totally okay and i don't judge that and i think that i'm i would have been open to that if those situations came up like a really really long labor or just different complications that can come up like i was open to it but i wasn't going into it i just knew that this at all costs i was going to avoid it if you go in with this wishy-washy i'm going to try and have a natural labor most of the time you're going to end up with an epidural so just really look for your why mindset really matters the next couple points i have are more about like preparation so the first thing for preparation which is point number two is to watch labor stories i will link mine here i loved watching labor stories especially as it was coming up until the point of actually going into labor i just was so excited and just like ready for my little guy to arrive and so i watched labor stories non-stop and honestly they were so helpful because you are able to then see all the different scenarios that can come up and just kind of be prepared so i know your labor story just like my labor story is not going to look like anybody else's labor story. It's going to be different. There are going to be a lot of different little things that happen, a lot of different things that come up, and just it's just going to progress differently. But watching labor stories really helped me to just see the different options and see what could happen and just be more prepared. So the third point is going to be to prepare for pain management. Honestly, watching, I watched a lot of videos, which I will link both channels that I watched beforehand uh, below, but managing pain is definitely... A big one um, and just being able to have coping skills and different ways to deal with contraction pain different ways to relax your body um, I had actually bought clary sage essential oil and that's supposed to help progress contractions I didn't end up using it but I heard a lot of really great things about that so that was one thing that I had looked up and then having like a birthing ball and um, a jacuzzi tub that was really huge um, getting I waited until my contractions were unbearable and then I ended up using the jacuzzi tub and that really helped me get through those last little bit of contractions where I think it would have been totally unbearable uh, just having like the jets hitting your body with the warm water helps you to actually get through it so that I would say being prepared for pain management and just having like a support person that can help you through that and already knows those coping skills because when you're in the moment, you're going to completely forget. So my husband, I actually had him watch some of the videos with me about pain management. And so actually in labor, he was like, what about this? Or remember this? Or just kind of helped me through some of the things and like having him be prepared as well really helped. Kind of along with that, remembering that contraction pain is a wave was huge. So for point number four, remembering contraction pain is going to get worse and then it's going to get better so as a contraction was coming on I was standing there and I was like oh my gosh this is getting worse and worse and just remembering that like it was getting worse and worse but then it was going to get better for like the second half of the contraction was so helpful because it it wasn't going to keep getting worse and worse and never stop so just remembering that it's going to be like a wave of pain for me was really helpful uh, so hopefully that can help you so the fifth thing that i would really recommend is to prepare your body ahead of time some of the two channels i recommended below also have a lot of ways that you can prepare your body for labor so i did different exercises or sat in different positions to kind of help the baby to get into a good position honestly it's hard to say if it actually helped or not like if maybe the baby was already in a good position but I would do it again for the next labor because my labor did go really well and so I don't know if those things helped or if they didn't either way things went well so I'm going to do them again so just different um, exercises that you can do especially using the birthing ball 
um, are really, really helpful for getting the baby in the right position, getting your body ready to open up and like birth a child. So that really helped and just preparing your body. I know you can do red, red raspberry leaf tea, which I actually ended up having contractions really early. So I also did not use that. I have all these things that I was prepared to use and didn't end up using, but I ha drinking red raspberry leaf tea a couple times a day can help your contractions to be more effective when you actually go into labor. So that's another one. Um, and then just some of the exercises. So yeah, I would definitely recommend looking at that. Um, I ended up laying on my left side the last couple weeks because that helps the baby to turn in the right position, just different things like that. So preparing your body ahead of time and just strengthening your body in certain ways is really, really helpful. The next thing that I would say was really helpful is to do what your body says. The nurse, my labor nurse actually told me this, gave me this tip during labor, but she's like, do whatever your body says. If, you're, if your body is telling you that you need to sit down, like sit down. If it's telling you that you need to walk around, walk around. So when I actually first went into active labor and was starting to have like really painful contractions I was like oh maybe I'll go for a walk and so me and my husband went out into the hallway and we were gonna walk around the loop and immediately I stopped and was like doubled over in pain and was like okay never mind let's go back in the room so we went back in the room and I was like okay I feel like I need to sit down and so the nurse brought me a ball but as soon as I sat down that pressure was like so strong with every contraction so I was like never mind so then I was kind of I ended up leaning over the bed um and my husband was rubbing my back and like I was just like kind of bearing through each contraction so just doing whatever your body says because really I think a lot of it is instinctual and our bodies know what they need in order to birth a child so just trying to really listen to your body and just relax and trust your body just having that um, trust that like your body knows what to do can help you relax because if you're all tense and stressed it's going to be really hard for your body to like relax and like things to dilate and open up so trust your body and do what your body tells you to do so the next thing that I think was really hard for me and really hard for most people is you can't be afraid to tear so I think being afraid to tear is really going to affect your mindset going into it and like I said before it's going to like tense you up and stress you out especially when you're pushing um I think I just got to this point at the end where I was like I don't care for like whatever happens because like I think I just realized most people tear and they're okay like I did not want to have to have stitches but honestly like a lot of people get stitches and that's okay so just don't be afraid to tear like I think a lot of people go into labor like so afraid of it but honestly it's not that bad I had a lot of complications afterwards because of the scar tissue that built up and um, the stitches were really uncomfortable but at the end of the day compared to like everything you're going through postpartum it was such a minor thing like I feel like I barely even like thought about it um so yeah, it's, it's uncomfortable, it's not pleasant, but it might happen and that's okay. And it's not, it's not gonna be the end of the world, especially once you're holding your little baby. The next thing, so pushing was, which I talk about in my labor video, pushing was like my least favorite part. I was like, I hated the feeling. I'd rather have contractions like the whole time than like be pushing. But the mirror, I think, so this is the next point, the mirror really, really helped me to push. So I feel like you're gonna love the mirror or you're gonna hate it. But I, I thought I would hate it. And someone told me like, if you don't have an epidural, like you're gonna be in too much pain to even look at the mirror. And that could be true for some people. But for me, I feel like I was pushing for so long cause his head kind of got stuck. And every push, it was just like becoming like, when is this gonna happen? When is he gonna like come out? And so when they brought in the mirror, one, it was so cool to see. Like, I think it was, I heard people talking about that before and I was like, I would never wanna see that. But then when I actually did see it, it was amazing. And so I loved, loved watching it. But it was so helpful because when I was pushing, you could see the head like coming out more. And so it gave you more of that like umph to like push with. And it was really, really helpful. So if you can't stand, honestly, it wasn't like as gross as I thought it was. But if you can't stand that, like that's okay. But I do think the mirror was super helpful in pushing and getting through that pain. So the next point is going to be to be prepared for pushing. This I think goes along with what I was saying before, but strengthening your body beforehand not just doing like the little things to help the baby get in the right position, but strengthening your quad muscles, your legs, your abs, like strengthening as much as you can before you go into labor. My legs, like I couldn't even like hold them up while I was pushing anymore because I was just exhausted and they were just like completely shaking hard because I just did not strengthen them beforehand. So when I would go in, like if I'm pregnant again and before that, I will 
want to strengthen my legs and my quads especially so strengthening your legs and then also just like the mindset behind it i was not prepared for the pain of pushing because it it's more like discomfort than pain it's like this strong pressure and i think like i don't know like i just wasn't prepared for that i think that was the hardest part and thank goodness for my husband and my labor nurse like she was amazing and she just every time a contraction was coming i would just look at her and she'd be like you can do it it's okay and so she really encouraged me through each like each contraction with pushing um and that was like really helpful but just i think if my body would have been like my legs were just dying and so i think if my legs would have been stronger that would have like really really helped me so definitely strengthen your body before you have a baby because i think it will pay off and i ended up in pt for a really long time after because of some pelvic complications and um back and hip and like all everything was just all out of whack which wasn't just from labor it comes from having ehlers danlos syndrome um, but if I would have strengthened before, and my PT did tell me if I strengthen my body beforehand, it will be a lot easier next time. So just strengthen your body as much as you can. And if you're already pregnant, you can look up different exercises that you can do beforehand, maybe squats or, um, some ball exercises that can be really helpful. The last tip that I have for you is to just remember that the hospital is going to be really pro meds, pro epidural, pro everything that isn't really natural and so it's important to advocate for yourself it's important to have a birth plan a flexible birth plan but to know what you want I really found it helpful I talked to my doctor ahead of time and she was so helpful like I think they're very pro epidural pro all of that but I talked to her I told her why I didn't want it and she was so supportive and she's like okay make sure you get a room with a jacuzzi tub make sure you have a birthing ball we have those in the hospital like make sure you do this and like just told me everything I would need to know to prepare for that and then going into it she was super supportive I ended up needing an episiotomy and she um in the office actually the week before I went into labor because I went into labor early um, she, I told her, I do not want an episiotomy. Like I'll just tear naturally. Like that is what I want. And during labor, I was like, no, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. And she looked at me and she's like, I don't know, like non laboring Nicole just told me that she didn't want this. And she looked at my husband and eventually like, cause he was really stuck there for a while. Like eventually we decided it was the best thing, but because I had talked to her beforehand, she was supportive in what I wanted. So just knowing what you want and being able to advocate for yourself and having your husband or whoever's gonna be with you able to advocate because you're not gonna be in the right state of mind when you're in labor is really, really beneficial. So these are the top 10 things that I would recommend for a natural labor and a natural birth. Um, if you haven't seen my labor video, it's linked. So go ahead and check that out. And if you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe because I will continue to share tips like this about natural labor and new mom life and all of that kind of stuff. So subscribe so that you can see when those videos come out and I'll see you guys next time.